Uh, disappointing defeat, you know, to Marshall. Um, and the situation played out just like the, the other losses have right there, you know, have a lead there in the second half and uh, couldn't maintain it, couldn't control it. And um, they took it down there and got the defeat. Uh, very, very, I think we all sitting around here and uh, can understand it was a very disappointing year for us. Uh, uh, disappointment in some eyes didn't probably feel the same as it does in, in some other eyes. But, uh, you know, I when I look at our football team, you know, I told them right before that, I was like, you know, in, in six of our seven losses, we you have the lead. You have the ability to go win the game. And now here we are, seven of eight losses had the lead there in the second half to go to go win the game. And we just could not finish this year. Mm -hmm. As far as the game, I thought defensively for the most part, really, I mean, really played lights out. Other than, you know, I think one touchdown run right there. Um, had the proper call, just out of place on the on the pressure and back slips right up on us and, uh, and goes the distance. Um, and that was, uh, you know, that was unfortunate because we had played so well right up to the point. And then, you know, the touchdown pass there in the second half, uh, I mean, it, it, I should have called timeout. Um, we were a little bit gassed and uh, they took advantage of it. And I gave that guy some pretty good protection and, and through that touchdown pass, I, I, I had in the back of my mind to go ahead and use the timeout to let us regroup defensively and, and hold them out of the end zone. And, uh, you know, you should have followed my gut and called the timeout, but we didn't. Um, I can't say enough about the group of uh, of seniors that have really made a difference in our football program. I and mean, these guys are um, guys that made a, made a commitment to, to Georgia State football. And when, you know, probably the commitment to Georgia State football wasn't the, you know, they, they, it wasn't, they had to believe in what we were doing. And uh, those guys believed in it. They did a lot of changing for our football program. They have uh, saw as much success in our football program that, that has ever been. And without those guys, we couldn't have accomplished anything. The bowl wins, uh, most wins in school history and stuff like that. And that's why it's so unfortunate that it goes out. You know, those guys leave us and, and go out the way it did. Um, so much respect, so many memories that uh, – you know, just gonna that I'm gonna have, that they're gonna have, and and it's over for a lot of those guys, most of those guys. You know, we we have to, me as a football coach, I've got to make some tough decisions. I've got to, I've got to evaluate everything from the top down um, with this group and this with this group we have coming back. Um, you know, sitting right here, there, there's a lot of things that have to occur for us to have an opportunity to develop into a, a, a good football program or good football team. Uh, it's going to take an outstanding offseason. It's going to take a, an unbelievable spring practice. It's going to take a commitment from guys that, that um, you know, for whatever reason, they, they, they're going to have to double down on everything and, and give it their all. This game is something they, they should never take for granted. I think at times uh, a lot of them, a few of them took for granted this year, but uh, you know, we got to we got to get it done. Questions? Obviously, maybe more general on the season because you haven't had a chance to watch this game back with this second half. But are there any common things you mentioned the second half struggles you think are playing into not being able to hold on to those leads? You know, I, I really I can't I can't pinpoint because you know here we are we we were actually flipped the script, uh, script so to speak we were down and then came back to take the lead um, and that's something that we didn't hadn't had happen you know we had come out of the locker room with the lead uh, I don't think it's something that uh, you know that our team quits I don't I don't think anything like that I mean when you look at us right there, uh, our last score, I mean, we, we throw, I think, a 54-yard thrash. We go down and we punch it in, and and then we have to make a stop to win the football game. We get a good football team, uh, you know, against a good football team. Uh, they, it's going to take some time. You know, you you got to really go and dive 
back into you know every situation, every quarter, every second half of this year, and, and see exactly what took place. Uh, so uh, you know, it, I really can't answer that question. What could you say about Thrash today and the way he played, and how he went over a thousand yards receiving today? How does that set him up? To... Uh, what What was the stats? I don't even know. Nine a, had one fifty five, I think. He was nine catches for one hundred fifty five yards. I I was joking a little bit, but I wasn't joking. I told him I said we're gonna get you sixteen catches and uh, and, and and we're gonna get it done today. Um, you know he. I think he's uh, tops in our league. I mean, he's a playmaker. The ball's in his hand. The ball needs to be in his hands more. Uh, I think that's one of the changes that, you know, early on in this season that, that there should have been nine catches of the game in, in, in that guy's hands and um, giving him the ability to take the top off of those defenses. See, I think he had a, a great game uh, to go over 1,000 yards like he did right there. I think he'll he'll probably be maybe in the top 10 in the country. I think he was in the top 15 moving into this last game in receiving yards. Uh, but I think he played a tremendous game. Uh, you know, I'd like for him to have uh, that two-point conversion down there and change the momentum. But, uh, you know, it was just a little pressure up the middle. And, but uh, he works hard, he practices hard. And that's all you can ask. Did you – is that the kind of pressure you expected from – their defense. I think they ended up with seven sacks and twelve tackles for loss. Is that kind of the expect? What yeah, you-, you know, in the last few weeks, we've uh, we really had a lot of inconsistencies uh, up front. And when you have uh, been doing this a long time, when you have inconsistencies in that lineup, then you you struggle. Uh, you can't have a guy going from left tackle to right tackle, from left guard to right tackle, or you, you can't have that. You got to have consistency in the position. Um, a lot of it had to do with with, with injured guys um, that we just had to maneuver, and um, a lot had to do with guys that we had hoped would develop into into quality players that weren't able to go in there and, and finish. I mean, there's some guys that we we left at home that you would have thought would have uh, could have helped us, but uh, for whatever reason, they just they just couldn't. Uh, we got to evaluate that. Uh, I don't think I've ever. You know, it's been a long, long time since uh, since like we've been dominated the last few weeks up front. Um, so we've got to we've got to get that that will be handled. That will be handled. I couldn't I couldn't tell what she ended up with, but uh, I, it looked like Broadway went out early with an injury. I, it's hard from TV to tell who's playing. I don't know if he came back or you just – Yeah, you know, he came back. I mean, he's had a bum ankle for two weeks. Uh, Travis Glover's had an ankle for two weeks. I mean, it's just Cook's going in there playing left guard. Cook's not a left guard. Cook's an offensive tackle. Uh, he's not – he can't withstand the uh, the interior. You know, he's just – he doesn't have that, that size. So, we've got to get bigger. We've got to get stronger. We've got to get better coach. We've got to coach better. We've got to play better. We've got to – we've got a lot of things we've got to do right now. You're sitting here at four and eight and – uh, you know, a lot of things got to get, get done. Uh, Coach, once again, it seems like uh, you ran into a defense that was ready to to attack your run game and did a pretty good job of, of doing so. Uh, speak a little bit on what Darren has done. When he sees the run start to break down, he actually had, uh, I think it was 19 for 26 for 291 and a touchdown, no interceptions today. Kind of speak on how Darren can kind of switch gears on us. You know, I think Darren is very, very capable of throwing the football and throwing it well. You know, he, he I mean, to be honest with you, I, he, he probably would have better numbers had we held up in protection much better. Um, and to deliver the football, you know, on time, there's a couple throws that, that were back. But, no, I, I think, uh, you know, when you look at us moving forward, uh, you know, we're going to develop that throw game a lot more. We, we've got to put pressure on those guys. We can equally go out and – and defeat and, and control teams in the throw game. Um, and today, yeah, I thought we had that. Yeah, I thought Marshall defensively, their, their secondary, uh, and all of their defense was very, very good. But I thought especially their secondary was was uh, was one of their strengths. And, uh, you know, today we we had an opportunity to take advantage of some some of our guys going out there and competing and, and, and getting over the top of those guys. But Darren delivered the ball, and I, when he delivers the ball, they got to make the catches, and they made the catches today. 
I guess coming off of a season and a game like this, when you have guys like Thrash and I think Granger has an option to come back and guys on defense making plays, is that what you hold on to the positives is that you've got guys that you know have been playmakers that aren't out of eligibility yet? Yeah. You know, when I, when I look at our roster and, and see, uh, you know, just what we have the tool wise to go to work with and God, you, you're really excited about it. I mean, you, you really are. You, uh, you know, you just look at what what could be. Now we have to. We as a football team have to have a lot of change uh, mentality uh, all seasons. There's got to be a lot of things that go on differently. Got to be great leadership. There's got to be great practice habits. Uh, there's got to be a great coaching that starts right here at the top. I mean, I got to evaluate everything I do. You know. Uh, I told them I'm not, I'm not going to be probably the most popular guy, and I I hope the hell I'm not. Uh, but we do have uh, we have a situation that uh, there there's a lot of promise if we can go out there and I can uh, put the pieces in place and maneuver these things uh, to get us better. Coach, in a year where there were a lot of injuries, uh, you know that happens in in football. That's just part of it. Um, speak a little bit about the depth of this team, how, I mean, even on defense, you have some of your biggest playmakers go out, and yet Clark and Abraham and all those guys are able to step in and not only give you snaps, give you really good play at those key positions. Yeah, you know, uh, you know people don't talk about injuries and, and coaches don't talk about injuries. It seems like that's the easy cop out and excuse for losing tough ball games, but uh uh, we had guys that are capable of going in there and playing when we lost several individuals this season. Um, it's good to see. I think those guys uh, uh, made the most of their opportunities. And, and it opens our eyes up as coaches that we do have capable guys that can go in there and get better. Injuries are part of the situations that uh, that coaches don't ever like. You know, I, I'd love to stay consistent with the, uh, the best 11 out there offensively, defensively, and special teams, but uh, it just doesn't happen. I mean, even today we lost our long snapper, our second team long snapper, and uh, another guy fits got to go in there and he's got to work it. So, um, you know, it's it's good to see we got guys that can back these guys up perform. Kind of on the other side, even with guys that struggled maybe down the stretch. Is getting that experience, even if it didn't go well in 2022, hopefully going to be, you know, they get that experience, they can know what they need to work on going into the next season and build on that? Yeah, I think so. You know, I, I'm a guy that, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty positive guy. A lot of, I mean, most of my days don't go well. And, uh, you know, these, this season is going to teach us a lot. It's going to teach us a lot. We you know, nobody likes to come in here, and, and and we all we're all competitors, and we we strive to win every each and every week. That's that's the name of the game. It didn't go our way, but man, it's going to open our eyes to a lot of the little things that we have uh, that's going on within our coaching staff, within our football team that that really came to life, and it's going to make us a better football team. It, it's going to make us uh, a lot more knowledgeable, uh, and it's going to lead us to a bigger, better, much better year heading into twenty twenty three. Uh, you know, it hurts right now, but God, uh, I promise you, we'll probably be sitting here. I'll probably be doing the same thing looking back on today and just thanking the Lord how it taught us how to become a much greater football team and program next year. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys covering Georgia State. I got Jamari here. Questions for Jamari. Speak up, please. I don't know if it'll go official yet until the end of the game or the rest of the games, but if things hold, you'd be the leading receiver and receiving guards from the Sun Belt. What does that mean for you personally? Um, it means a lot because I had a high standard for myself this year. Um, I set goals for myself this year, and for me to be able to reach those goals or potentially break those goals, um, it just means a lot to me, but it also shows like a lot of uh, a lot of defenses are starting to respect my game, so that stands out to me too. What were your goals? What What were your goals? Um, I wanted to break the receiving record at Georgia State. Um, I want to break the touchdown record. I want to have over fifty catches. Um, well, what else? Uh, I wanted to. I think I think making a bowl game was on there. Winning the Sun Belt Championship. 
and uh, I think just leading to some building, leading to some building, receiving yards and touchdowns, just being one of those guys. Jamari, what would you say are some of your strongest attributes that allow you to uh, get separation, especially further down the field? Um, I probably just say my knowledge of knowing knowing the coverage and knowing how the DB is going to play it and just playing fast. With the, with the big numbers today, was there a was there a play that really stood out or that you? Uh, like better than the others? Is there one or two plays? No, sir. No. You seem to have a really good rapport, really good relation with Darren. Um, in the off chance that he doesn't come back next year, is there somebody else on the roster that you also enjoy catching passes from? Um, I get a lot of I get a lot of second second group reps with McKaylee, so probably McKaylee. Um, McKaylee's a good quarterback too, so I feel like our chemistry. If Darren doesn't come back next year, I feel like our chemistry will be okay too.